my main point is to uh, try and talk about uh, the European Parliament elections, which of course are taking place against this horrific background of conflicts in Ukraine and in Gaza, and uh, against the background of rising authoritarianism and anti-European rhetoric in many countries um, coming from the far right, which is largely aimed at destabilizing uh, what I would call our values-based uh, democratic societies, and also at undermining the rules-based international order, which has underpinned relations between civilized countries since the end of the Second World War. And unfortunately, authoritarianism is no longer limited to uh, countries such as Russia or Turkey or Azerbaijan. Ironically, EU countries such as Hungary and Slovakia, to name but two, uh, which in Soviet times clamored for freedom, democracy, and human rights. But today they're pro-Russian, mim mimicking Putin's repressive laws, for instance, the foreign agents law, and attempting to obstruct uh, EU assistance to Ukraine. Uh, as a rider, I would just say that the association in which I'm involved is actually considered to be an undesirable organization under the two uh, the 2012 uh, uh, or um, <clears throat> law introduced by Putin in Russia. Um, and we have a case before the European Court of Human Rights. We're the only foreign association which brought a case against uh, um, Russia in the European Court of Human Rights, and there will be a ruling on it one day. But I would like to... Uh, support using the European Court of Human Rights because I think they uh, the court is extremely sensitive to attacks on the media and it's a way of uh, uh, getting um, a support for uh, the uh, media which as we know is under attack uh, um, everywhere at the moment. Anyway what I first thing I wanted to say was that uh, um, what I've just said, I think, is a good enough reason not only to vote, because I always want to get across this message to people, not only a, um, a reason to vote, but a reason to vote wisely in the upcoming elections for parties, whether they be of the right or the left, but make sure that they're parties which are pro-European. Now we come to the elections. And uh, uh, one of the things which is striking is that there will also be elections in the United Kingdom. And then there will be two new administrations, one in Brussels and one in London. And uh, that will have a certain number of consequences on the relationship uh, between the United Kingdom and uh, uh, the uh, European Union. Uh, I think the tensions which existed immediately after uh, Brexit have died down a little bit since then. Um, and uh, uh, that means that the way the UK's relationship with the European Union will, developing, will develop in coming years is really at a turning point. Uh, as you will recall, uh, the withdrawal agreement, the trade and cooperation agreement, and the more recent Windsor framework to resolve trade disruption between Britain and Northern Ireland is provides the framework for relations at the moment, but there is frankly a lot which could be done to improve things. Uh, one of the things which is going to happen in the elections in June for the European Parliament is that uh, there'll be um, very many new faces entering the European Parliament because less than half the current members will be standing for re-election. Likewise, there will also be a new set of commissioners. This is important because many personal relationships between MEPs who knew their former UK colleagues, because in 2019, there were still uh, UK MEPs, but then they left, of course, when Brexit uh, solidified, um, uh, those relationships will disappear and wane considerably. Likewise, 
uh, the relationship at present between the UK Foreign Secretary and the European Commissioner in charge of relation with relations with the UK plays and has played an important role in the post-Brexit area. The good relationship between uh, the then Foreign Secretary James Cleverly and uh, uh, Commissioner Maros Sifovic reportedly was crucial in finalizing the agreement on the Windsor framework, which was one of the most important uh, aspects of uh, um, uh, the relationship in recent times. Likewise, the new Foreign Secretary, David Cameron, uh, has uh, built up a constructive relationship. Uh, but now we can't tell who will be dealing with EU-UK relations on uh, either side by the end of 2024. The Labour Party, which will probably come to power, is currently avoiding bre Brexit issues at all costs, as was sadly only too visible when it turned down the very generous offer from the European Union, uh, or from the European Commission rather, on relaxing rules for young people uh, visiting the United Kingdom and staying for four years rather than the two years, uh, which is the case at present. However, uh, if a Labour government comes to power, it will no doubt see it in its own interest to engage more closely with the European Union in order to achieve Keir Starmer's stated aim of pursuing economic growth rather than public spending. Um, for that, better access to the UK's biggest trading partner would seem to be an, absolutely, uh, an absolute prerequisite. Um, in 2025 and 2026, uh, there will be a revision of the Trade and Cooperation Agreement, and this will provide an opportunity to agree, to agree a closer trading relationship uh, with the European Union. Uh, but of course, that cooperation will also be determined uh, by the political sensitivities in Northern Ireland. Um, uh, the uh, DUP, the Democratic Unionist Party, uh, favoured Brexit and is likely to be sceptical of deeper engagement with the EU, whereas Sinn Féin would favour a closer relationship with the EU, as this would mean closer alignment with the Republic of Ireland and therefore strengthening the case for Irish unity. Sooner or later, these issues will play out in the new European Parliament, where a shift of a right, and more generally um, uh, a shift of a right on the European political scene, could generate friction with a centre-left government in London and might hinder deeper cooperation. However, amidst these differences, global street strategic considerations in relation to, for instance, Russia and China and the alignment of policies will necessitate, necessitate an incre increasingly close partnership. On broader issues such as security and defense, relations have arguably grown closer, and this is perhaps best illustrated by the EU and UK's uniform support for Ukraine to defend itself against Russian military aggression. In this context, it's important to uh, remember what is termed um, uh, strategic autonomy, whereby the EU hopes to protect its supply chains from strategic rivals such as China and Russia. The aim is for the EU to try to rely primarily on close cooperation with strategic partners, and the UK is clearly a strategic ally. Uh, this bodes well for continued cooperation and perhaps also for a closer form of partnership. This could lead to better coordination and cooperation on environmental issues, for instance, to protect industry and other vulnerable interests in the move towards net neutrality by 2050, uh, which we, both the UK and the EU are committed other areas which could benefit from enhanced cooperation would be emerging technologies such as artificial intelligence, where approaches differ 
but will it really be in the UK's interests for it to continue to forge its own path? Even with a more open Labour government, many questions at present remain unanswered because Keir Starmer has emphasised Labour's reluctance to be a rule taker, reflecting the delicate balance between UK alignment with the EU and autonomy from the EU. The upcoming European elections are therefore undoubtedly important for EU-UK relations. But as with all elections, it's impossible to predict accurately how things will play out. The best conclusion I can reach is to say that people in the EU and in the UK should vote in their elections. As I said earlier, uh, they should vote wisely for pro-European political parties because that will ensure the survival of pluralistic democracy as we know it. When democracy fails, inhumanity, individual dignity, and freedom are threatened. So please let us help spare us from such a fate.